Let's now move into step 13, which is the third step for Spring MVC. What we'll do in this step is we would configure a view. We will add a login.jsp. Until now, we have seen three important Spring MVC concepts. One is the dispatcher servlet, front controller. That's the way you can remember it best. The second one that we created in the previous step was the login controller. The login controller is a controller. It's also called a handler. Login controller is a controller. Basically, dispatcher servlet gets the request, redirects it to the controller. The controller handles the request, tries to find the right data for it, and sends the request back to the dispatcher servlet. So, the dispatcher servlet is the one which controls the flow. So it gets the request, it sends it to the login controller, login controller responds back with something. And in the earlier example, what we did is we put an annotation called at response body. When we put at response body, what the dispatcher servlet does is whatever is returned back to the dispatcher servlet from the login controller, hello world dummy, it is sent back as the response. So the dispatcher servlet sends hello world dummy as the response back to the browser. In real world applications, we don't want to return the string back. What we want to return here is the view, I mean the JSP, which we would want to redirect to. Let's say I want to go to the login view. That's basically what we want to return back to usually. And that's where the views come into picture. The view is nothing but a JSP. So here I want to create a view by the name login.jsp. So login.jsp is a view. In Spring MVC, what we would need to return is not the entire .jsp because whether I'm redirecting to any JSP, the .jsp is common. We will try and handle that in a common way. What we will try and return is just the name of the view. So what we would need to return is just the login. So now the login controller say hello method would want to go to the login page. So if I want to go to the login page, I have to remove the response body. So I remove the response body because I don't want login to be printed on the screen. So if I had the response body on, let's say the response body is here right now and I'm running the application now in Firefox. So if I leave the response body in and run the application, you would see this. So whatever I'm sending in is what is printed. So if I send some text out, that's the thing which is shown on the screen. But when I don't want that to happen, I want to actually go to login.jsp. Now, what I want dispatcher servlet to do is once it gets the login, so login controller is called, login controller returns back login, I would want the dispatcher servlet to send the request to the login page. So that's what we would want. So now if we refresh this, aha, this is an error. What it's saying is there's an error in here. So it's saying there's an error with what we are doing because slash login and login. So it's kind of going in again and again. But what we want to happen is we would want to redirect to login.jsp. So we would now need to tell dispatch a servlet that you should match the login that I'm saying using actually refers to login.jsp. Where is the login.jsp present in? I would create a folder. So what I would do is I'll create a folder called webinf comma views. This is generally the place where we put all the views. Views are just the screens, JSPs. So what I would need to tell the dispatcher servlet is when I return login back, I'm returning login back. You need to send it to this JSP. What we would need to configure for that is something called a view resolver. So a view resolver, what it does is when I send in login, it would redirect to webinf slash views slash login dot JSP. In step 13 dot MD, there's a small snippet for the view resolver already present. So the view resolver, which we are going to use is a specific version. We want to find out, like we are going to use a internal resource view resolver. What this does is what we are saying in the configuration of it is when I send a view to you. So when I send login to you, add a prefix webinf slash views and suffix dot JSP. So what we are saying effectively is the prefix you need to add 
to whatever I'm sending is webinf slash views. And the suffix that you need to add is dot JSP. So when I send login, what it does is it takes the prefix this and adds login. So basically what it would do is this is the prefix, this is the middle and this is the suffix. So this is the thing which it resolves to. So when I send login, the view resolver would resolve to webinf views login.jsp. Let's see that in action right now. So what we'll do is I'll copy this snippet. I mean, it's quite a simple snippet. It's a simple spring bean that we are configuring. Bean class is equal to internal resource viewer. And the property name which we are passing in is the first property is prefix. The second one is suffix. And we are giving a value to prefix and suffix. So I'll copy the snippet in to my spring servlet. Where is our spring servlet? It's to do servlet.xml. So what I'll do is I'll just copy it in just below the component scan. I could have copied it anywhere. So I'll copy it here. And now we are configuring a view resolver. So we are saying the servlet about how to resolve the view when login controller does not have the annotation response body. So when it, there is a response body annotation, then it would go directly to the screen. So login would go to the screen. But when there is no response body annotation, what it does is it makes use of this view resolver. So when I send in login, what the view resolver does is it would convert it to the name of a JSP. So let's see what happens. So let's save this. Let's wait for the server to pick this up. So it's starting up and picking it up automatically. That's good. So now I would do a refresh and there you go. So we are re getting redirected to a login.jsp. The reason why the login.jsp is automatically redirected to is because we already had a login.jsp which was created for the normal web application. So the login.jsp was already present from the earlier code. You can find the code a complete code for login.jsp in here. All that login, dot, login form has is a very simple form. So it's a name. I mean, input name is equal to name and input name is equal to password. This is of the type password and there's a submit button. So it's basically a very, very simple form which contains a name and password and it, there's a submit button as well. What we are doing now is actually redirecting to this JSP. Path where this JSP is present is webinf views login.jsp and that's what we resolve to so web enough views login.jsp so when we send in login from the login controller what happens is we would be redirected to web enough views login.jsp which was already created in here if you'd want to create it from scratch what you can try doing is delete these two jsps and try creating the login.jsps from scratch but it should be quite a simple thing during the last three steps, you'd find me repeating a lot of stuff again and again. The reason I do that is because the basics of the Spring MVC framework are the dispatcher servlet, which is the front controller, the controllers, view resolvers, and the views. I mean, these form the crux of what you would want to learn with Spring MVC. And once you have a good understanding of them, it makes learning Spring MVC very easy. That's why what we would try and do in the first five steps is try and keep the pace a little slow and we would repeat a few things again and again. Let's now repeat the entire flow that we saw until now. So what we are doing is when I type in the URL Spring MVC slash login. So I type in this in the URL Spring MVC in the URL which we specified in the web.xml it takes me to the dispatcher servlet. So dispatcher servlet is a friend controller. Any request goes to the dispatcher servlet. So dispatcher servlet sees the subsequent URL slash login. And it knows because it knows that there is a request mapping with value is equal to login for login controller. So it calls this method say hello. And once it calls the say hello, the say hello method is returning back a text, a piece of text called login. So now this dispatcher servlet sees that there is no response body tag. That means it has to resolve this using a view resolver. So what it does is it checks the to-do servlet.xml 
for a view resolver and there is a view resolver in here so it uses this to resolve the view so what it does is the view resolver would take the login and give the webinf views login.jsp as the output so what the dispatcher servlet does after that is it would redirect the request to the login.jsp which is the view get the response that's basically the content which is in here so this is a form which is in here so that comes back and then the dispatcher servlet would return the response back to the browser so that's the sequence on the spring mvc side of things now the sequence on the browser side of things is little different so when i type in spring mvc.login what it does is it creates something called a get request so a get request login is created i mean the url is spring mvc login as we know this response status is seen here which is 200 because this response went through successfully and you'd see the response contains the html which was returned back so that's basically the flow that we have seen until